Hello everybody. I am going to record a quick tutorial for you on modules. I already did this one yesterday, but for some reason the sound didn't work. So I am going to just do it really quickly here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log into Canvas. Well, that loads. I don't know how y'all are doing, but that was a long Wikipedia for me. So the second I'm done with this, I am going to go float the river. So I hope you guys are getting some much needed self-care this weekend. Okay, if you remember, we were in our pretend theater course on Canvas where we made this simple grid. Um, and that was something we did to, for a nice simple class. I'm going to show you how to make modules within that class. So you're going to go and you're going to click on modules right on your home page because you already linked it there for the kids to see. And you can see that I have my first week's uh, assignments here which is very exciting and so that is what it's going to look like once you have it in and it's going to have the week and then the assignments that are due that week for the kiddos so the next thing I'm going to do is go over here and I'm going to click add module and then I'm going to call this week 2 August 17 through 21 and then now this is a good tip you can lock this until um, whatever day you want. So if you had something due on Friday, you can unlock it that Saturday or Sunday or unlock it the day it starts. I personally teach high school. I don't want to have things locked. I want students to be able to work ahead. Locking things might help your uh, elementary students, your sixth graders, or your low incident SPED kids who you want to make sure are only seeing what you want them to see. So I'm going to go ahead and click add module. So now you can see I have a new module here, but there's no content in it, and it is currently unpublished. So this is a published module, and this is an unpublished module. And we wanna add things to that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click Add, and I'm gonna say that we're gonna do an assignment first, okay? So we're gonna do New Assignment, and I'm gonna name this very creatively Assignment 2. And you can indent these in, by going increase indent if you want it to be in a little. That's just about aesthetics. So if you like the way it looks indented, I don't really care. Um, it just depends on what my course building is look like. If I have a video and then I have three assignments that go with that and then I have another video with other three things that go with that, then I'm gonna indent probably. But for something simple like this, I'm not really gonna indent. All right, and then we want to make sure that we add a few more things. We want to add a discussion. So we're going to go down to discussion, and we're going to do new topic, discussion two. So you cannot use the exact same assignments even if you're repeating it. If you're repeating it, you need to copy the content. And the reason why is because if you put another one, then whatever due date you had for that original discussion, like if you're having the same kind of discussion at the beginning of each week, you want to put that in. So just make sure that you um, are creating new ones. Even if the content is the same, just copy and paste the content. And then let's go ahead and do a quiz. So we're going to do new quiz, quiz two. And you can see if I had made all of my quizzes at once, if I would uploaded 10 quizzes in, they would all be listed right here. But I'm doing this one module at a time because for my brain, that's what works best. But if you're someone who works better and says, I know I'm going to have nine assignments this semester, five discussions, and three quizzes, then you can choose where they go after the fact and upload all that content within the assignments bar or the quiz bar at the same time. So that is your preference. You can still use them in modules. You're just not building them from modules. But this is how I like to build assignments. Okay, so you can see the difference between this and this. This has due dates, this has point values, and this has nothing. And that's because we've just created these assignments and discussions, but we haven't set parameters yet. So let's go ahead and set the parameter for assignment two. We're going to click on it, and then we're going to go over here and click on edit. And then we have this called assignment two. So we can, um, from here we can embed a video. So you can just click on this, put a video in. You can write something and link it to a URL, or you can simply put directions for the assignment and then write your directions, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's make this assignment worth 50 points and let's, um, change the submission type. 
So this is going to be what we can. Now we can do this, watch if we do an online submission, we can add a text entry, we can add a media recording, we can add file uploads, you can put as many as you want. This is great. Now, if I'm having the kids write one paragraph or less, I use text entry. If I'm wanting them to record content, then I will put rec media recordings. If I want them to write a paper a, or a larger assignment that's more than a paragraph, and I want them to do it in a Word doc, I'm going to do file uploads. And then from here, you can restrict file upload types. Sorry, my grandma's calling me. You can restrict file upload types, and then you can put Word doc, etc. I never do that. I just leave it at file uploads. Or let's say you don't want a text entry. Let's say you want to use an external tool. So you can um, click here and find your external tool and it's going to list your downloaded tools alphabetically. So if I wanted to use Flipgrid here, I have not added Flipgrid into this class, but this is where I would put that. If I wanted a Flipgrid video, I could do that here. If I want them to do a language assignment um, through Duolingo, I can link Duolingo. Uh, we'll select that. And so now this is going to connect to my app. And then once I create the assignment, of course, we're going to need to create a due date and then we're going to save it. Okay. So now I have um, a, an assignment and then I have open a new tab and this is where all the Duolingo stuff is. So if you've created things within Duolingo and you've connected those apps together, you're gonna see your Duolingo account here. If you have connected Flipgrid, you're gonna see your Flipgrid there. And if you've already created assignments in that app, you can do that or you can do it straight from here. And I've already put a video in my playlist that another teacher made that was really helpful to me in using Flipgrid. So you can understand how to do those parameters here. But for now, we're just building modules. So I'm going to not worry about that step. So I'm going to go back to my modules. And now, if you see, I have an assignment. It has a due date and it has a point system. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my discussion. You're going to go to edit. You're going to do, um, you know, directions here. And then you're going to um, add certain things. So one thing that I like to do with my directions is I like to say respond to at least two of your classmates posts um, and then that helps them to to know what the requirement is in terms of responding they need to respond to at least two okay you can add files here and do something like that or you can allow threaded replies so this is a of area that is really important and that's this box right here users must post before seeing replies I always do this because this way they won't be able to see student work so if I'm doing an assignment where I've had them read a play and I'm having them do a discussion on that play I don't want them to read everybody else's answers and then write their own response and be able to use other work I want them to write their own response and then once they post it they can see what other people had you can decide to make this a group discussion and you can enter group sets that you've created within groups. That's your um, prerogative. Or you can just, you know, leave it as a one person thing. And then you can set the availability when it, when you know you assign it and when it is due. And once you do that, you can save it. Bam. And now you have a discussion. Okay. So then I'm going to go back again to modules. And I'm going to add a quiz. I don't think I put a due date for this discussion, so let me change that um, real quick. Did I? I thought I did. Um, so you would want to put a due date in here. Okay. So now let's go to quizzes. So let me show you a different way. Instead of going back to modules, we're going to go to quizzes. And then I see this quiz two. That's the quiz two that I already created in my module. All right. And it's blank and there's nothing in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the quiz. Surprise, surprise. And then from there, we're going to put directions. Oh my gosh. Is anybody else like me, as soon as people are watching me type in a Zoom meeting or something, I literally am incapable of typing. Like I can type perfectly, 
not perfectly, but I can type better when no one's watching me and then if someone's watching me type, I type like sixth grader. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay, so from here, some things to think about. I like to shuffle the answers so that it's not the same answer for every kid so they can't call each other and say, oh, the answer to number two is C, you know, etc. We want to make sure that they're doing that. I like to set time limits. Um, even though I do allow open book quizzes, um, it leaves them, they have to actually do it in a timely fashion. So you can set it for one hour, you can set it for two hours, however long you want it to be. You can make it a 10 minute quiz if it's short and you don't want them to like use a book and you want to keep them from being able to look up every answer, you can shorten the length of the quiz. It's totally up to you. You're their teacher. So then um, from here, we want to decide if we want to allow multiple attempts. I sometimes will allow multiple attempts depending on the quiz. On an exam, I will not. If it's open book and they have a long time, I don't let them have multiple attempts. But if it's something I really want them to master that content before they move on, I'll allow multiple attempts and then I'll say, you have to get this score um, in order to move on or whatever, you know, whatever you want to do. Again, this is your thing. And then letting students see correct answers. So if the last day you're going to accept late work is, let's say, the uh, 26th, then I wouldn't let them see correct answers until 27th. If you're going to be one of those teachers who allows late work until kingdom come, um, then I would say don't let them see correct answers because then they can share those uh, answers with other people. So obviously this is common sense and we think about these things with our paper quizzes, but it's hard to remember to do that with the other quizzes. And then you can have them show one question at a time. I don't like to do that. I like for them to jump around. Um, I know that helps me when I'm taking quizzes. So we have all of this. And then of course we're going to throw in the due date. Let's say this quiz is due September 1st. And then you can set the parameters of when they're allowed to access it from when to when. If you want to, that's up to you. Um, and then publish the quiz. And now we have a published quiz. We have published quizzes and discussions. So you can go back and see um, in the modules that we now have this module and it has our other assignments in it. And we're gonna go ahead and publish that module. And, and now we know. So this is how you create a module in Canvas. Again, I like to do it week by week. You wanna do it for however it works for you. So if you're covering one specific thing in a, unit and you want to break that unit up you can make a module for if you're if you're a, if you're a history teacher you can make a revolutionary war module and then you can make a civil war module you can um, do whatever you want within those parameters to create it however it works for you and then if you wanted to do week to week things um, within a module that you can use your indentations so the sky's the limit I just wanted you to have a brief overview of how to do this and now I'm gonna go float the river and have a nice weekend and I hope y'all are resting and having a great weekend too and I'll see you in the next one um, I've been getting requests that's so weird for my YouTube channel that has three and a half followers <laughs> I've been getting requests for canvas tutorials so if you have a request please don't hesitate to reach out to me and say, hey, Krista, I really would like for you to do a video on such and such, and I will. So um, I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. And now it's that awkward time where I don't know how to stop the recording. <laughs>